What's up everybody, it's Diamond, and today I'm going to show you uh, a bit of my process for rendering 3D models in Blender. Why am I making this video? Mostly just to show off that I've found a way to do it. And also, just to like, for educational purposes, just to sh show that it can be done and stuff. I, I, I don't know, I, I'm just making it because I feel like it. So I'm uh, I, I'm a, I'm a huge gamer and I'm also a huge 3D nerd. Neither of these things I've really expressed on my YouTube channel because I'm just not my channel was not created to be a, a gaming channel or a 3D rendering channel. So my videos on that subject are few and far between. Mostly I just do like uh, heavy metal stuff, but now I'm doing well. I mean Doom has some heavy metal in it, so. Uh, I play Doom, and I wanted to see what I could do with some of the 3D models from Doom. So the software environment that you're seeing right now is, of course, Blender, as uh, the video title hints. But the version of Blender that I am using for the purposes of this video is 2.8 beta. Currently, the stable version is 2.79, and they, they completely redid the user interface for 2.8. A lot of this video might just be a rant on why I hate Blender 2.8. But I mean, it's still in beta, so maybe they'll make some improvements, maybe they'll bring back stuff. I really hope that they bring back Blender Internal as an optional render engine, because Blender Internal is just the greatest. I, I like it even more than I like Cycles. So yeah, enough of an introduction. How do I render Doom models in Blender? Well, first of all, first of all you gotta find some way to um, rip the models out of the game, so that they can be understood by, the, by Blender, of course. The program that I found, uh, first, first search result that I found that would do something like that was Doom Res X. It was created by this guy called iOrange, that's his handle. So, um, how it works is basically you just open, uh, the, the package file for Doom. It's called gameresources.resources or snapgameresources.resources. This is, um, the resource file that Doom loads when you're making snap maps or when you're playing snap maps. For some reason, snap map loads a lot slower than campaign, so, uh, but the, the file size is obviously a lot smaller than the actual game resources file, but I'm gonna open game resources just to show you what, what, what I, what I do. So there we go, Doom resources have been loaded. So there's all these interesting looking folders over here. Now, uh, I don't know how they make these rippers that, like, rip stuff out of games like audio and, um, Images and textures and models and stuff. Audio is a completely different thing for Doom. You have to use a, a WISE converter to um, extract audio from Doom, and it's very difficult. I figured out how to do that as well, but that's not the point. The point here is that um, Doom, the Doom file system is very confusing. So um, the first thing you might be tempted to go for is um, the MD6 folder because id tech engines usually have a .md whatever version of the engine they're using tacked onto the end. Uh, Let's see, uh, Quake 3 had MD3, Doom Doom 3, or as I like to refer to it, Doom Cube had, had MD5. And Doom 2016, which runs off of id Tech 6, I think, um, has MD6. So, uh, however, what you, you're, you might be disappointed when you open the MD6 folder and there's only one item in there. Mancubus Dynamics.md6 rig. So, that's a bit disappointing, but... When you scroll down here, like, there's all these files that, um, like, were, were, were in there apparently, but you, you can't extract them, like, uh, let me find an example here. Uh, yeah, so here's, like, so here's the Hell Knight, so if you try to extract that, then, uh, if you just, I'm just gonna save it to my downloads, because that's where I save everything, we get that error message. So, um, obviously there's some broken files in the archive, and the MD6 folder, which you think might have some of the models in it, does not contain it. What's more, the textures folder seems to be rather incomplete as well, because there's only one item in there and doesn't even show up in the preview area right here. The cooked folder yields some semi-promising results, so we have um, quite a few quite a few folders of models here. Um, let's see here. Here's the Doom Marie himself. You can see the model right here. This this 3D model can be extracted and. Um, this model can be extracted from Doom Res X and exported as an FBX file that you can then import into Blender. 
But the only problem with that is, is it's exactly as you see it right here. There's no textures, no normal mapping, no shaders, no nothing. So that's unfortunate. And if you go into the textures folder, actually, um, let, let me show you where the actual fo folder for all the models is. It's right here in base model. Here in base model and MD6 is every single model in Doom 2016. That's where you'll find your models. It's kind of confusing, I know, but that's where they are. So even in the generated image folder, and you go into texture, it seems like this might be promising. And models, you've got characters right here, Doom Marine. But there's only a normal map for uh, the his visor. And uh, I don't know what this is. I, I'm guessing this is a specular map, or maybe it's just a m maybe it's just the texture for the the sort of transparent glass on his helmet. And um, the, 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 who knows what these are for? There's a normal map for an eye and a diffuse texture for an eye. Some kind of texture for a female scientist that looks like hair that was never Im implemented. A lot of textures for Olivia that's basically just like bloody hair and eyes and stuff. Same as we've seen before. The, all the weird runes that you um, see on the Crucible's blade um, when, it, when it gets ignited. I think you can see that in the Doom Eternal trailer. Basically just a whole lot of stuff that does not cover at all what we need it to cover. Like there aren't any textures for the Mancubus or the Hell Knight or anything in here. There's, there's literally nothing. There's not even, like, textures all that much for the environment stuff, like the UAC and Mars and stuff like that. There's nothing pertaining to that in this textures folder or anywhere else within the file system that we can see. So, because of this, because I could not extract textures, even though I could extract models, I was... I was bent on finding a way to extract textures. At first, I considered using an OpenGL ripper, but then um, I read like posts on forums of people who had tried you doing that, and uh, they didn't have much success. So I searched and I searched and I searched, and I, I eventually found some kind of um, exporter that would do the job for me. Not only would it export models from the game, it would export textures from the game, so you could like open up the textures as an entirely separate view, and you could like you could just extract any texture you wanted, basically. So after finding that, I was able to export an insane amount of textures. So, um, let's see, what do we have here? Um, here we've got the texture file for the Cacodemon. So this is what this would be like, uh, the, the, the behind of the Cacodemon, like where the weird veins and stuff are. And of course, that's where its eye would be. There's an entirely separate texture for the eye. It's like this pale glowing green thing. Yeah, here it is. Here we have, um, the Crucible, the, the, like the, the hilt of the Crucible. You can see, like, there's one of the skull thingies that's on the side of it. Pretty cool stuff. And, um, here's the chain gun. Well, part of the chain gun. I think this is just one of the chain gun, like, weapon mods that you can tack onto it by getting a field drone. So, yay, we had textures. That's amazing. However, the only problem was, is when we started trying to import those models into Blender, we had no normal maps. Or any, any, anything maps, basically. I mean, I could, I could do specular and, um, stuff like that by using built-in shaders, but... Normal mapping is a huge part of 3D in general. I'll prove my point here. Um, let's see, uh, let's open the chainsaw. So here we have the chainsaw, right? This is exactly as you see it in the game. It's like, it, it's brutal, it's, um, um, you can even see on the side it says Mixon Beaver Tooth Pain Saw, 30 inch close combat security. And also we have a set of instructions right here, switch to ortho mode. We have a set of instructions right here that you never could see in the game because you never got that close to that section of the model. So we can really explore all these things of the model that we were never able to explore in the actual game. But I'm off topic here. So um, anyway, um, this the, the, um, the chainsaw that you see right now is normal mapped. I will get to the normal maps in a second. But let me just show you the difference between no normal maps and normal maps. So um, I'm going to disable the normal map node here. Wait a minute, why isn't it? Oh, I'm in the wrong material. Let me switch to a different material. Okay, there's the material we're looking for. All right, um, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to render um, the image right now as it is with the normal maps. That's not a good render. Let me try again. Move the camera a little bit. And, uh, let's see. There we go. Perfect. Render. All right, so that looks freaking amazing, right? The only, the only slight problem is, like, um, the, like, the, the metallic part of the, of the saw. Like, um, the, the bar and, uh, this, this little, I don't know what the heck that is. It's obviously got some technical term, but I don't know what it is. So that part of the, so that part, um, needs, like, a reflective shader or some kind of metallic shader that would be used to reflect the environment, but, like, we, we'd have a lot of, we'd have a lot of roughness on the, on the shader, so, um, we, but, but, but still, like, that, that looks pretty cool, right? But now let's switch to a different render slot, and I'm going to show you what it looks like without a normal map. Let's disconnect the node here. All right, there we are. You can totally tell the difference, right? Like, all of a sudden, it looks all smooth and weird and artificial. 
but once we put on the normal maps, then all of a sudden, like, we've got all this crazy 3D bumping and stuff that's been added in just by a single texture. So you can see the difference between these two images without normal maps and with normal maps, how important normal maps are to get in those little details that if you try to render them with actual geometry, so normal maps are great to help when you don't want to render something with actual geometry and you just want to, like... So you can basically render 3D stuff, like, you can put 3D bumps and stuff on things without changing the geometry of them, in, in layman's terms. That's basically what normal mapping is. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of gearing this video towards people who don't know much about 3D. So there we are, that's the importance of normal maps. But, but the only problem is, like I, I, like I discussed before, you could not extract normal maps from Doom. And I was, I like, you obviously see the normal maps in the game because there, there is normal mapping in the game because you see those exact same, like, 3D bumps on the saw in the game as you do in Blender right here. So how was I going to get those? The first thing I thought of was, um, like, well, but when I look at the textures for one of, for, for like, the chainsaw, for example, you can see that, that there's, there's 3D bumps that have been, like, rendered into the image somehow like you can see the depth in the image it's almost as if a normal map has been applied to the image just like that like you can you can tell right here that like the the, the flecks of blood on the saw have like been rendered into the image somehow so how do we extract those bumps and depth and stuff from the image the first thought i had was um go to photoshop and use the built-in generate normal map feature or use one of the the better normal map generating tools out there on the market. It's a real pity that um, NVIDIA Texture Tools doesn't work with CC Photoshop. So I, I opened up, so uh, I, I opened up the texture in Photoshop. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use GIMP for the purposes of this little next part just because it, it shows what I need to show you better. So uh, what you can see is that the alpha channel apparently stores the normal map data. Windows, so when you see this in Windows Photo Viewer, it looks like all full of depth and stuff because Windows Photo Viewer doesn't process alpha data. So when you go and open up it up in Photo Viewer, you can see that depth because Photo Viewer is not actually processing or displaying that, that alpha data. But you can see it clearly in GIMP. So uh, what we had to do was we had to figure out how to isolate that alpha channel and figure out how to convert it into a normal map because once we had the alpha channel then that would be our depth map then we could convert that into a normal map easy or a bump map i, I prefer normal mapping bump mapping is a thing of the past so uh, that's but so that's what i did i i i slaved away for long hours in both gimp and photoshop trying to figure out how to isolate the alpha channel and i i eventually figured out how to do it though so when you isolate the alpha channel with photoshop this is the image that you get from the chainsaw texture. I'm just still using the chainsaw as an example. So you see that the, the depth basically works out perfectly. The alpha channel seamlessly transforms into something that could be used as a normal map. The alpha channel doesn't display things that would be undesirable to the normal mapping process. Like um, you, you can see on the original texture how uh, like there's the there's the Mixon beaver tooth pain saw logo on the diffuse part of the texture, but on the alpha part of the texture no such logo exists, so that would not map into it if we were trying to make a normal map from the alpha channel, which is good. Plus, what do we have? We have a perfect grayscale picture, like no weird um, pixelation and stuff. Like, basically what you've got here is just something that can be converted into any type of map, really. So, I used, a, I used Photoshop's built-in normal map tool to generate a normal map from this isolated alpha channel. This is what I came up with. Doesn't look anything like a normal map, right? It looks terrible, I know. And also, when you zoomed in, you can see all of these weird little lines that Photoshop has somehow rendered into the image. So, I did not know why these lines were there. But whenever you tried to put the generated normal map into Blender and render it, all those little lines showed up in the normal map, and they looked really strange. Somehow, though, I managed to circumvent that. Um, I don't even remember how I did it. All I know is that I can continue to do it, and it still works. And... This is the finished normal map for the chainsaw that I made. The, the chainsaw was the first normal map or model that I really tried to finish because it's just such an amazing weapon. <laughs> so we had our finished normal map, and when we put it into Blender, it looks absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. 
Um, now, I actually I actually exported this particular model as an OBJ, not an FBX or um, an SMD or anything like that. So what you're seeing here is not rigged. If if I was to import the rigged version by exporting it to an FBX or something like that, then um, what you'd see is a bunch of bones here by the the handle, which you could like use to animate the uh, the cord being pulled or something like that. And you see an insane amount of bones right here along the teeth because the teeth have to be animated. So there we go. We we knew how to make normal maps and we knew how to make um we knew how to make textures. So. We knew how to make rigs because, um, thank God the exporting software already did that for us because I am the world's worst rigger. I, I've rigged, I've made a Minecraft character rig, and that's the only rig I've ever attempted. No, I've attempted other rigs before. I've even attempted at fixing up some other rigs that I found that were partially complete. I've, I know the gist of it. Like, I, I know how to, how to rig in Blender, but... When when it comes to time uh, when it comes time for weight painting and waiting and waiting bones and stuff, I I'm lost. I can't do that. It's it's impossible for me to do it without completely deforming the model altogether. I don't know how other studios do it, but they manage it somehow. And thank thanks to them for um making thanks to them for waiting their armatures for me so I don't have to. I'm gonna open one of the rigs right now. One of the one of the models that's actually been rigged. So um, here we have um, a female UAC scientist. Uh, you, I don't think you ever see her in the game. Uh, well, th there's possibly that she, you see her um, in that part. Like uh, I think it's in the the advanced research complex, where like um, you're 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 witnessing like the holograms of all the people backed by elite guards like fleeing from demons. I assume she may be among them. But, uh, yeah, um, I like to think of her as the, the female equivalent of the UAC spokesperson because, like, re really generic looking, like, she's got the weird, almost robotic UAC suit. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, there's an armature has been generated for this one. Um, um, I did the IK constraints on the leg myself, so, um, it just provides for easier animation. And, uh, I did, uh, where, where's the transform? Arrgh! I, I, I really, really loathe Blender's the new blenders system of like transforming like it's it's got the it's got the old stuff and i, I honestly prefer the transform manipulators when it comes to moving and rotating and scaling stuff I, I hardly ever use the keyboard shortcuts but not only that but they had to they, they had to like put that down here so like w when you when you do snap to grid shift tab thank god they kept that keyboard shortcut like it it it, it only snaps the locations to the grid like, you gotta, yeah, like that. I know I'm deforming her arm weirdly, but, uh, yeah, so you have to go down here and turn on rotate and scale if you want to do that without them being turned on manually, without them being turned on automatically, and that, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Like, Blender 2.8's workflow is, it's the pits. They removed Blender Internal, which was, in my opinion, superior to Cycles because it could basically do anything that Cycles could do, but much faster and with a much easier workflow. And they replaced it with this fucking weird-ass thing called EV. Who knows what that's supposed to be, but... Yeah, EV sucks. When you turn on ambient occlusion for EV, the entire world background becomes grayish, and it doesn't stay black like it is with Cycles or Blender Internal. Because, like, I I'm using Cycles right now just because it's better than EV, and... So when you when you have cycles, um, it keeps the world background color and it doesn't change it if you turn on ambient occlusion because I I always like to have a little bit of ambient light coming in from my scene. And also, no matter which render engine you use, it's if it's either if, if you use EV or cycles, I have I don't know what the heck Workbench is. I haven't used it yet. No matter if you use EV or cycles, you still have to endure the same like compositing node shader building workflow, which is really bad. It's really horrible for people who are new to the whole 3D thing, and they just need to get started quickly, because with Blender Internal, that was the great thing about Blender Internal. You could get up and make a shader within a few minutes without having to connect any weird-ass nodes or anything like that. And it, it was just so simple. And it rendered fast, too. It could render fast on the CPU or the GPU. Now nah, it could only render on the CPU. What am I saying? Cycles is the only thing that can render on the GPU. So anyway, yeah. Workflow of Blender 2.8 sucks. Uh... Taking away Blender Internal Render sucks, and basically, they've tried to modernize Blender 2.8 and make it into a mainstream 3D program. Uh, it looks more polished. The entire thing looks more polished. It's still the Blender we know and love, and people who have been using Blender for a long time will still recognize it, but it's just not the Blender that we, that we know. 
I'm getting off topic here. So, um, yeah, I, 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 here we have um, the, the female scientist model. Um, I actually did a short animation test, which was really shitty, uh, trying to animate this model. It's so cringy. It's like the worst animation ever, and I can do better than that, but I, 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 I made the entire thing in like maybe 20, 30 minutes. So, uh, yeah, it's, if, if that, yeah, that, that's, that, that's the kind of person I am. I'm lazy enough to where I don't even bother to animate things properly. We have some other models that, um, I just rigged up in Blender. I, it's a fairly simple workflow once you have the gist of it to, um, put a model into Blender. And, um, um, I, actually, that's another thing I have to talk about. Speaking of the models, Blender 2.8, the current beta, refuses to support any plugins that you had back from 2.79. So I actually kept my 2.79 Blender, and I used it to import um, Val the Valve SMD files that um, the model exporter, the Doom model exporter, would make. So I would I would import the SMD files into Blender 2.79 using the Blender source tools that Valve provides. Thank you, Valve. Uh, you actually do some good in this world for once. So yeah, that's what I do. I'd go over to um, here, and because of course I already had my my everything set up. Um, I could just import um, whatever SMD models I need to because um, FBX is FBX is not a good format for models to be exported in. I'm just sorry, it's not. It's it's not widely supported. The versions of it are really finicky, and any importers or exporters that you do have will most likely export the wrong version. FBX is just not a good format. I mean, it gets the job done if you could do it correctly, but it's not a good format. So here I'll uh, in this particular folder. I think this is on my flash drive and not in my actual main exported models folder. But I have a couple in here. Um, Templar.smd is um, is the Night Sentinel model. That's a weird thing. When you crack open the game files, you see a lot of things that like were maybe meant to be implemented in the game, but weren't ever implemented, or maybe it was like meant to be called that or something. But like, yeah, Templar is the name given to the Night Sentinel. Um, Spencer is what Samuel Hayden is referred to as. And uh, the the Gauss cannon, which I have a 3D model of, also is referred to as the railgun. So it makes you wonder, like, why all the developers didn't bother to rename all this stuff when they put it into the game. I don't know. So yeah, I would, I would import um, the SMD files, but the only problem is once I would import them. Let me just show you what happens. So we have the lamp right here, right? Um, ah, uh, you can't see it. Um, okay, uh, there it is. So we have the lamp right here, right? The only problem is once you switch to material mode. To view like the to preview the lighting and stuff, the model appears to be lit from the opposite side. It took me a really long time before I was able to sleuth out why this was, because no matter how much ambient occlusion I would put into the scene, no matter how strong I would make the light, it always rendered like this. Just like that. Completely black. And if you turn on ambient occlusion, that's what you get. It looks awful, completely garbage. You don't you don't even get any textures. Well, I mean, I, I haven't added textures to this model yet because I just imported it for the purpose of this demonstration, but yeah. Eventually, I found out that the way to get around this was you have to go to the mesh data and you have to turn off auto smooth normals. So once you do that, bam, lighting switches around and everything looks just fine. So I don't know, I don't know why Blender Source Tools imports SMDs that way and auto smooths the normals. But, um, I, maybe it's something that you do in the model import settings. I, I never look at those, so I wouldn't know. But, yeah, um, it took me a long time to figure that out for some weird reason. But SMD is a good format. Brings you in, um, easy to understand armatures. But the weird thing is, is that, um, for some reason, when you, no matter what format you export a model from Doom in, when you try to import it and use the face rig, the face rig doesn't, doesn't exist. Yeah, the, the face rig doesn't work, so I had to delete the entire face rig to um, prevent clutter from building up in my scene. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just going to show you real quick, because um, Blender 2.8 um, preview is a douche. Uh, you can only see the alpha maps on her eyelashes and her hair when you render it. So, um, uh, you have to render it, and uh, there, then you, then you get the alpha channel from the texture. Now, because, um, no, for this particular hair texture, because the hair texture has to have an alpha channel in it for the transparency map, because you're not going to render all that stuff as hair particles or actual geometry, the alpha map is used to generate, like, uh, the, the strands of hair. So, for some reason, 
the hair texture was actually exported from the game with an actual normal map that came along with it. For that very reason, I assume. So there we have the female scientist model. Let's look at some other models. Here's everybody's favorite weapon, the super shotgun. Uh, does this one have a normal map? Yeah, it does have a normal map. So, yeah, you can like, see the little ornate decorative thing on there. Let me just take that away for a second. You can tell the difference immediately, right? Um, now, I... Uh, I... Th there's no, like... Th there's no comprehensive mask texture or anything like that in the Doom files for, like, uh, the, the, like, different areas where different shaders have to be implemented. So, um, what I had to do for the Super Shotgun in particular was I had to... Uh, go and select all of the geometry that uh, was part of the barrel or anything else that like looked shiny and metal-ish in the game and I had to make a separate shader for it like you see right here it was it was normal mapped um, with the same normal map as the, the rest of the shotgun but I just I just gave it a metallic shader um, I used I used principal shader because I'm, I'm lazy and I don't want to make an actual metal-ish shader Besides, it's the default shader, so I can't complain. So yeah, um, you're, you're seeing like um, the shiny metallic uh, quality of the barrel right here because of the built-in environment map that um, Blender 2.8 implements. That's one of the few things that I like about Blender 2.8. It, it implements like an automatic environment map to uh, pr provide like a preview of reflective shaders when there there is no environment around. Because right now, uh, you see from the world data, I've just got a, like a black background, but... Uh, and that's what you see when you render too. Like that, there's no reflections that because the background is just black. But when you're previewing your renders with material mode, uh, you can uh, like Bl Blender gives you a built-in Blender 2.8 gives you a built-in environment map that you can use to preview uh, reflective shaders and stuff like that. You can choose like a um, an environment map from right here. It's, it's pretty cool, if only the rest of Blender 2.8 was that cool. Again, I did export this particular shotgun model as an OBJ, not an SMD or anything like that, so it's not rigged. If it was rigged, obviously, like, you'd have the barrel, because the barrel's got to move up and down when you reload it, and the trigger's got to be pulled. I'm not sure if they animated the trigger, I'm not sure if uh, that's... I'm not sure if that's an important enough thing that you would actually pay attention to in-game to want to animate the trigger, but... Yeah, let's open another one. Here's the Night Sentinel, I talked about this guy earlier. I already did um, an animation test, a really shitty animation test um, too, I might add, for um, this guy. What happened to his normal map? For some reason, the arms aren't normal mapped. I'll fix that real quick. All right, there we go. It's been normal mapped. So yeah, like I said, this was this was the first model that um, I tried to do an animation test for. I already posted it on YouTube. Hint, hint, go and watch it. But yeah, the, 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 the Night Sentinel is really cool because we only ever see him in the game as like um, a character that you can play in multiplayer or snap map. And uh, like the green ghost thingies that uh, appear when you get the Crucible. I, I, I've, ju I, I, I've just played Doom. Th I, I've just played through Doom. I, I filmed a playthrough series on it and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to share it with everybody as soon as I get, uh, as soon as I get it all edited and stuff. So I know basically everything there is to know about the game right now because it's still fresh in my mind. But yeah, I, j I just think that the Knights Diddles are really cool because they they're, they they look badass with like this knight like helmet and stuff. They they obviously have sort of techy armor like uh, like the Doom Slayer himself. I mean, the, I personally think that, that the Doom Slayer's armor was not originally that technologically enhanced. Uh, they just did it. The UAC did it when they found his armor, and they just, like, experimented on it like they do everything. They even experiment on Mancubi and turn them into Cyber Mancubi. I have a Cyber Mancubus model. This lumbering behemoth is, uh, is the, is the one that the UAC manipulated and turned into, like, one of their own personal battle demons, like, uh, like the Revenant. If you don't know the tale of the Revenant, then, uh, you're, I, I suggest you not read it. So this rig is very full of bones, uh... One of these days, I'm going to convert them all to, like, actual bone shapes and not just weird spheres. But, yeah, the, the rig appears to work pretty well. Like, you can grab things around, like, uh, sort of push his belly in a little bit. Maybe make him a bit thinner. He's obviously self-conscious about his body weight. Otherwise, he wouldn't be shooting rockets at you all the time. The arm rotates fine and appears to take uh, the tube along with it. Again, the, the like the, the face rig does does not work all that well. Only the bottom part of the face rig really works, and that's that's the only part that counts really because you get to like 
like get to see his jowls jiggle around and stuff. Plus, because of because of the normal mapping, uh, w when you render it, you can like really see uh, the details of of his uh, of his face and like the, where the skin is like all folded and mangled and stuff. It's 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 really fascinating just to, like be able to pull these three D models out and be able to see like them up close, like even closer than you can by getting the model as a collectible and viewing it in, in Doom itself. Here's another mysterious character, the Elite Guard. The Elite Guard, um, they, they don't show up in the game like at all except in holograms or in, uh, like the environment where you have to, like, pull their Praetor chips out of them so that you can use them to upgrade your suit and stuff. Because, uh, the di different parts of their helmets, uh, glow, like, uh, I think the, the little chip right here glows, but sometimes, and, uh, this part of the helmet glows. Okay, so as it turns out, I did not make an emission shader for this particular model, but, uh, you guys, it's still pretty fascinating, like, if, if you zoom in right here, you can see that there's, um, a pentagram on his forehead, and if you take a closer look at, like, models of dead things in Doom, like, uh, particularly, like, the dead scientists, like, that you pull their arms off and get their key cards and stuff. Uh, those, those guys all have the pentagram imprinted on their forehead. It's like a mark of the demons that was left, like, to let you know that the demons have been there and they killed this guy. So, um, while the elite guard is not hideously deformed like all the rest of the demons victims, he still has, uh, that, that pentagram on his forehead because... The Elite Guard model, while it's it's perfectly posable and riggable, like, you can do whatever you want with it, but, um, it's not like, it's not like in the game it was ever meant to be used for anything other than pulling out the Praetor chip and upgrading the Praetor token. I mean, upgrading the Praetor suit, Jesus. So, th th that's just another thing about what's interesting with these models. Once you have them, you can do anything you want with them. Like, you could, you could animate an entire storyline around the Elite Guards. Like, you could make a story, like, to where some, one, a lone Elite Guard survived because, like, his kill chip went faulty or something. I, I'm, give, I'm gonna give people ideas, aren't I? Here's the Goss Cannon. Again, th this one isn't rigged, so uh, you, you don't get the little thing spinning around right here. Because I exported this as an OBJ, and OBJ doesn't embed rigs into the file. But, uh, yeah, here, here it is, and, uh, of course it doesn't have, like, the, the weird glowing thing around it, because there aren't any, there, there aren't any, like, texture maps that come along with this that would show, that would, that would, I could use to tell Blender to ha where to, also there isn't, like, this weird, uh, like, blue fuzz above it. Like, I, I, I suppose I could do that with, like, um, compositing if I, if I added some emissive stuff on here. But most likely what I'd have to do is use volumetrics, and I, I really hate volumetrics. So yeah, even, even when you import the models, like, there's still lots of things that you, can, that you have to do yourself, or that you can just do for fun, or because they're necessary. It's, it's, it's just, I, I don't know, I find, I find a lot of satisfaction in being able to pull models out of video games and uh, just see the inner workings of it. Kind of gives you an understanding how the game was made and how how things were how things happen and stuff. I worded that very poorly. I, I I've I've done a lot of wording stuff very poorly in this video, which I think is why I'm gonna stop it right now. I've already um I've already recorded for long enough as it is. This video is gonna be pretty long I think even after editing. So um I am going to leave you um with my pleasant image of the chainsaw normal map. So, uh, I hope you found the video informative. If you did, then be sure to subscribe if you really enjoyed it, and check out more of my videos, including my original music tracks and stuff like that. Until next time, fanboys, Diamond out.